common meaning can be given to the succession of new experiences which will be crowding in on the newcomers. Once they finish their leisurely tour, they'll plunge into a fast-paced school year that won't slow up until June. Selection of a homecoming queen is high on the early autumn list of activities. Candidates present their qualifications to the assembled student body for critical review and judgment. Popular vote decides the outcome. And here she is, the winner. Even as she accepts the honor of her election, plans have long been in the making for the fraternity house and dormitory decorations that brighten the face of the campus on the big day. But no amount of advanced planning ever seems quite enough. Every year there is a last minute all night rush to get ready for the throngs of sightseers. Competition is intense in the annual effort to create the most elaborate or original or provocative decoration. The queen and her court tour the town, inspecting decorations, and then drive into the stadium for the afternoon's game. Rugged small college football has long been part of the Baldwin-Wallace tradition. While big-time athletics are not an ambition here, more than a few BW performers and teams have earned national recognition over the years. But far more important than headlines is the spirit of participants and spectators alike. This is one of the things that ties a college together so that it can be an effective force in the lives of those who know it. Once more into the line, and there's a comforting lead at halftime when the queen officially receives her title and her crown from her predecessor. This is her day, but with acclaim go duties, the welcoming of alumni, friends, and students, the awarding of trophies for the best decorations, and the receipt of a hearty bus from an enthusiastic winner and admirer. BW's widely known marching band takes over the field. Ladies and gentlemen, the Baldwin Wallace Alma Mater. mater rings out slow and clear on the autumn air. It drifts out from the stadium and washes across the silent, deserted campus, recalling old scenes, strengthening new resolutions, and reviving the traditions of more than a century. Five generations have shared this experience and heard the alma mater sing farewell to golden autumn. For now, we'll hear Old Winter's song as snow covers the campus and the school year settles comfortably into its routine. The heart of any college is the classroom. In its effort to develop the complete personality, a college calls on many resources and uses many facilities. But this is the core. Whether the subject be an introduction to psychological testing or advanced nuclear physics, an education should equip the person receiving it to meet the demands his world will make. As a liberal arts college, Baldwin Wallace places its greatest emphasis on a firm understanding of the basic arts, sciences, and disciplines that constitute the core of our cultural heritage. Equipped with this knowledge, graduates will be more than able to hold their own in a world which is learning that mere technical proficiency is not enough. 
there must also be men and women with a broader view and a wider knowledge. Increasingly, it becomes evident that they are the ones who will be called on to guide and direct the new society we see taking form around us. In addition to a liberal arts education, Baldwin Wallace offers approved plans of study to prepare the student for graduate school or for professional schools of medicine, dentistry, nursing, law, engineering, theology, art, library science, and forestry. Of special interest to many undergraduates is a combined liberal arts engineering program offered in cooperation with a number of engineering colleges. It leads to degrees in both fields after five years of work. The success of Baldwin Wallace men and women in graduate and professional schools is evidence of the soundness of their decision to base advanced study on a firm foundation in the liberal arts. The philosophy of a liberal education can borrow from Terence and say that nothing human and nothing related to man is foreign to it. A liberal education strives to open the eyes of wonder so that its followers may see a broader world than they saw before. Special attention is paid to subjects of interest to students in this busy industrial and commercial center. The fine arts, too, are important. In a day when statesmen paint and businessmen sculpt to find relaxation, they open new vistas of human experience and offer new rewards for living. education starts in the classroom, it certainly does not end there. This is a world of people, and knowing them, understanding them, getting along with them is as much the mark of an educated man as the ability to sight-read Homer. There is a rich and varied social program at Baldwin Wallace designed to achieve this very thing. In addition to the special interest clubs and honorary groups, all of which are active socially, there are six national fraternities and five national sororities on campus. Right now you are visiting in a fraternity house, but the essentials of the scene could be repeated in the lounge of any dormitory, in the recreation hall, or even in the campus snack bar. For no matter where you are, it is always fair weather when good fellows get together. And the complete man has a body as well as a mind. Annually, Baldwin Wallace basketball teams rank among the toughest small college quintets in the country. DW offers a complete schedule of varsity athletics in both major and so-called minor sports. And the school places heavy emphasis on an extensive intramural program that involves many of the men and women on campus. In addition to purely physical benefits, the values of competition, of team play, and of dedication to a goal demanded of any athletic pursuit are an important part of a complete education. This game happens to be with an old and dearly cherished rival. In another year, they might well turn the tables, but tonight it's all Baldwin Wallace, and the crowd loves it. Now, watch the team really get hot as it responds to the cheers. his mind, he is body, and he is social animal. But he is one more important thing. He is spirit. And recognition of this fact finds expression in the Lindsay Crossman Memorial Chapel. Students themselves conduct voluntary weekly religious services here. Baldwin Wallace is a church-related college, and deep spiritual conviction underlies all campus life.
mind and body, spirit and society. Together they turn with the wheel of the seasons until grim winter turns green and the whole college gathers for an all-school picnic to celebrate the eternally light-hearted promise of spring. Now events will rush and stumble over each other as a busy school year draws to a close. Track men are as sure a sign of spring as crocuses or the first robin in a school that has an international reputation for its runners. Watch that man moving up on the outside. 140 yards to go now. The men and the boys part company here. Watch them pull down the stretch to the finish of the half mile. And the winner, running smoothly, comes home well under two minutes. But the big noise of the Maytime is naturally enough May Day, a whole weekend of festivities that starts with a traditional parade through Berea. This is one place where town and gown meet and share the fun. The May Day parade is as much a part of Berea as of Baldwin Wallace itself. And high on the memory list of any youngster growing up here is the odd recollection of the first day he saw the towering floats and the pretty girls. rapidly gives way to horseplay as the May Day weekend wears on. The interfraternity chariot race, a bitter competition, if a weird one, touches things off. The Greeks never had a word for anything like this. On the other side of town, the faculty wins the toss of the bat to start the annual senior faculty baseball game. Living up to tradition, the seniors then defeat the juniors in their yearly tug of war. But the losers have one consolation. Next year, they'll be seniors, mighty of muscle, proud of mean. Determined, if apprehensive, team captains wish each other good luck before the start of the sorority boat race. Their craft are rubber rafts. Their broad sea, Wallace Lake, formed from an old quarry hole, which once provided stone for Baldwin Wallace buildings. Teamwork pays off as the winners move easily out in front. But the men in the fraternity half of the event seem to rely on main strength and awkwardness. To the winner goes the splash as one victorious captain congratulates another. The queen of the May appears and the holiday quiets down. Small friends, as well as large, wish her well and spread flowers in her path. And then she enters to take charge of the day that is officially hers. The retiring queen crowns her, and it is only exercising a royal prerogative to fuss a little about the fit. Details settled, she surveys her subjects and her realm.
for two days of competitions ranging from baseball to boat races, from floats to chariot racing, climax the afternoon. These will glisten on many a fraternity and sorority mantelpiece, guardians of fond memories and inspirations to future efforts. A traditional picnic on the North Campus winds up the weekend and clears the way for the rest of the spring's activities. For in many ways, the climax of the year is still ahead. The brass choir playing from the top of Marting Hall, a main classroom building, announces the annual Bach Festival, one of the country's outstanding college-sponsored musical events. This is an appetizer for a series of evening concerts, but it has become a tradition in its own right. Golden-throated music spills out across the quiet springtime to reach hundreds of listeners all over town. Visitors from all across the country gather to enjoy a unique experience of lasting value. And spring is the time for concentrated study. As nights grow shorter, Hours at the books grow longer in preparation for finals and graduation. In many ways, this is education at its best. The creation of a community of questing minds, searching together for answers that no one of them alone can find. Knowledge, like all other experience, must be shared to be most meaningful. And if all things studied aren't on the formal curriculum, there is still no reason to discount them. Many kinds of reading make the full man. Relentlessly, the year rolls on toward its appointed close. Toward the day when the story that started in a golden autumn four years before must have its playing out in the brightness of a June afternoon. The faculty assembles and marches down Bagley Road toward the gymnasium, now a far different place than when we saw it last. Close behind follow those who are still students, but soon to be graduates. For four years, they have been part of the continuing fabric of an institution, old in years, rich in traditions. They have added to the memories and the strengths that make the college, and they have received from it some measure of knowledge, of respect for learning, of dedication to ideals and challenges that lie beyond the campus, that comforting second home which we enter only to leave, where we learn only so that we may be equipped to learn more. In the truest sense, this is a commencement, not an end, but a beginning. And that is why a college exists at all. It gathers together lessons from all of human experience and seeks to unify them and to make them meaningful. So that as each class graduates and goes out, it takes along more than memories and happy recollections. It should take, too, things as eternal, as unvarying as the sundial on North Campus that steadfastly counts the procession of the years, the patient symbol. of the 1970s presents a mystery to those who would catalog it in a general file labeled higher education. For a college has its own individual personality. To deny it this unique quality is to dehumanize the people who give it life. In directing a motion picture, I face the possibility of injecting my own personal interpretation. In this case, we've decided to eliminate that problem by presenting the information just as we acquire it. 
you can make your own interpretation. Baldwin Wallace College is in the Cleveland suburb of Berea, Ohio. Just as in the development of human personality, its early development played an important role in what the college is in its maturity. This college was founded 125 years ago for the purpose of giving young laborers a chance to get a liberal education. It has always been affiliated with the Methodist Church. I think that one thing which has characterized Baldwin Wallace has been its steady progress. Too slow at times, perhaps, but uh, steady, as opposed to spurts and setbacks. Judgments of many people always have been involved in decisions. This still is true today. The Board of Trustees, for instance, is a working group. Administrators, trustees, faculty, and students are involved. Not all in complete agreement, but I would say toward a common goal of keeping the college contemporary with our society. <laughs>